Genesis chapter 28, 11 to 16. You know, while I was sitting there and the testimonies were going on, the Holy Spirit just gave me a scripture for us this morning. And I want us to read it together. So what we do is we all look on the screen and we will read. So don't read your version for now. Let's just read the same one. Are we ready? Yes. One, two, go. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night. Because the sun had set and the two one of the souls of that place and wanted to have his head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed and behold, the other that was set up on the earth. And his top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it. shall be as the dust of the earth, you shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you where you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Lord, we just pray today that you will open our eyes to see and know your ways. Amen. You said to people of Israel that I have revealed my acts to you, but only Moses knows my ways. We want to know more of you, Jesus, not because... See, to know you more than gold or silver, to know you more than the testimonies, to know you more than the riches that you have given us, to know you more than the blessings, to know you more than the healing, to know the giver, not the gift, to seek you, oh God, for what you are going to do. We want to say thank you, Jehovah Lord, for there is no like unto you, God. You are indeed destiny change of the miracle working God, the one that is able to do what no man can do, the one that of men there is none like you we give you praise jesus help us as a people to know more of you in jesus mighty name we prayed amen. let's have our seats amen, amen. hallelujah amen. when i read the scripture that we just read there's so much revelation that we can take from it but the one that caught my attention was the lord was here and i knew it's not how could it be possible for God that created the heaven and the earth to be somewhere and we are not even aware? Is it possible for President Obama to walk in and we don't know? Yes. I'm still dreaming. I should have said President Donald Trump to walk in and we don't even know. I'm sure some of us might not have met the Queen of England. But because you have seen her on the screen a few times, when she walks in, you will tap your neighbor. Is that the queen of England? But the God of heaven was somewhere and Jacob did not know. You and I are like Jacob. We do not know that God is with us. You don't know. We were traveling to Maryland with my family and Rola was asking me when the plane took off. I think it was Rola or Lewa. I said, Daddy, I'm talking about 30,000 miles up there. And she was asking me, Daddy, are we moving? <laughs> and for a second, I, I give it, you know, I kind of look back and say, is it true? Because when you are, you don't even know that you're going. When God is walking in your life, you may not know it. Because it may not come in storms and in loudness and in noise and so much that we are used to. You know, our Christianity was programmed to believe that until something falls down, that is God. We forget that our God says, my ways are not your ways. So you wake up on Monday, you check your body. I can still feel the pains. Is God working? Are we moving? Are we there yet? You wake up the following morning, you check the letter. The doctor says, no, you can't have a baby. You ask, is it going to be possible? You look at your bank account. I paid my tithe. Is God doing something about this? My brother said he's sold. Do you know it's possible to sow and you don't get a result immediately? A good example, we were, we were when, when my son was little, you see, God has helped me so much to trust him using my family. Because if you cannot learn from basics, 
I tell you, the word of God will just look like. That's why a lot of young adults, because I pastor young adults in my church, a lot of young adults are struggling to, to really trust God because they cannot marry reality with Christian faith. But what we fail to realize is that Christian faith is not about reality. Because if you have to go by what you can see, then you will not know that God is here. Because it takes God to step out of a situation. But you are looking for God in that situation. He is God to be outside the situation to make it work. My son was saying to me, Daddy, can I pray? Can God do anything I ask him to do? I said, yes. Okay. He's here now. So he asked me, can I ask for snow? <laughs> and I said, yes. Okay. Lord, can we have some snow? It was, it was winter time, but it wasn't snowing at the time. So my wife looked at me. My wife was saying, you told him that God is able to do it. And then we were driving from Stevenage. We were going to London. No snow. Uh, but daddy, you said to me that when I ask God anything, he's going to do it. I said, yes. When you tell your mom, mommy, I'm hungry, what is mommy going to do? She's going to go in the kitchen and start preparing it. And so God is preparing the... <laughs> And, and it, it, it's so interesting. And I, I'm here standing on the poop. I'm not going to lie to you, people. Before we got to London, what happened? It started snowing. And I said, God is teaching me. Man, go God, go God, you did it, you did it. <laughs> and that is what God does. You may not know. Jacob said the Lord was here and I knew it not. Don't forget, Jacob did not just give his life to Jesus. Jacob was born into a Christian family. His grandfather was the father of faith. He was born by Isaac. Isaac was born by Abraham. So for, his, for somebody that grew up in the mission house to say that the Lord was here and I knew it not, it simply means he couldn't feel it. Tell your neighbor, forget the feelings. I keep asking people, how many Sundays is it going to take us to believe God? And it challenges me personally. I've been a Christian for a while. But when people keep coming to church, they keep coming to church, and we are just at the same level. And I keep asking God, is it possible for somebody to get hit by a truck and remains the same? How come we say we have an account and we go and we, still, we are still the same people? Because God is here and we don't know it. We don't know it. And we have made church tradition. Because if you don't know why you are doing what you are doing, you can't do it well. You cannot do it well. When we say, let's bless the Lord, if it's my God we are talking about, then I'm going to bless him the way nobody... I, the only person that really danced seriously this morning was that brother. Yes, sir. You, sir. <laughs> and I was saying to myself, if I happened to be an angel this morning, I would have taken all the blessings from other people and gave it to him. And, I, I, and I'm being honest with us. When you know... That's why Psalm 100 says it. When we come to God's presence, there must be a knowing. You know, it, it's not about coming to church. The, the, the devil is not going to stop people from walking to church. No, he's not interested. He's not going to stop you from walking in and say today is Sunday. He's not going to bother you with that one. It's going to stop you from knowing that the Lord is here. Because it is in your knowing that your power If you don't know, you don't know. If somebody gives you a check of one million pounds and you go home and you put it in a frame and you hang it on the wall, are you going to get money? No. And you got potential riches, and you got you know potential you know wealth on there, and you're posting it on, on there. It is an annoying. That's so much power in knowledge. If 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 I were to give you AK forty seven each, I say let's go to war. Some people would possibly be be hugging the AK forty seven. Oh, what a gift! <laughs> Some people will cause more havoc because of knowing. Say knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge of God. Knowledge. So God is with you. Forget what the enemy is telling you this morning. Because when I walk into a place, how people worship God is a direct translation of how much of God they know. They know. You know, I went to Manchester and I was leading worship. Pastor Come Alive is Church. And at some point, I just started crying because the song began to minister to me myself and I couldn't sing anymore. You know, because 
it, it always gets to a point where you know that it cannot be about you. It cannot be about you. And this one, I want to challenge us. As we bless God, as we worship God, let's come to a point where we will say, the Lord is here, and I know it. And I know it. One of the reasons why people struggle to know that God is with them, you know, is guilt. The devil knows how to do it. It's going to come and remind you, I know what you did last summer. It's going to remind you. That is no, that's what he knows how to do. Romans 8 1 says, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. You're going to ask yourself, am I in Christ Jesus? And if I'm in Christ Jesus, Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Let guilt just go. But if the devil comes to you and reminds you of what you keep doing, you cannot know that God is with you. Number one problem, guilt. And number two is many times we look at a situation and we magnify the problem. Isaiah says, magnify the Lord God of hosts himself and let him alone be your fear. Because you, you, you must magnify an object or a subject. You see, you cannot say, um, people say they are sitting on the fence. It's a wrong statement. You cannot sit on the fence. It's either yes or no. So when you magnify the problem, you know, my wife was sharing with me some psychological uh, analysis they did. Some people were told they were sick. They weren't sick. And they realized that because they were told they were sick, they started feeling sick. Yes. If we believe the report of man so much, why do we take the report of God so carelessly? Why do we feel that the God that carries the weight of the world upon his shoulder cannot carry our problems? Why do we feel because somebody has been married and now you are thinking, when am I going to get married? Why do you think you have to flow with other people? Why do you feel like... And I say to people, until we see God at work, we may not know. But I tell you, tell your neighbor, God is with you. No, that person doesn't like you. No, turn to somebody else. God is with you. That's why God, God is able to do just what he says he will do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on Oh, he's able. God is able to do it. The Lord is with me and I know it. Another, pro, another issue is lack of trust in who God is. Lack of trust in who God is. We're going to do some kind of CAC-like approach. How many of us have been to CAC before? You know, there, there used to be some women in those days when the pastor would call, let's go to Isaiah, and that woman would just read from there. How many of us remember? So now that's what we're going to do, right? We're going to tell, show the young ones how church used to be. Not like now where you got projector. We didn't have projectors. And we didn't have smartphones. We all came to church with our real Bible. And God helps you if, if, if you were caught without a Bible and a writing note. So now I want somebody to read loud Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 and 13. Someone that can read loud. A Bible reader in the house. Aha, you see? strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will fill thee with the right hand of my righteousness. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. Amen. You're able to say, fear not, I will help you. God is saying it. And, you know, I don't know, some people feel like until we begin to speak in tongues and begin to jump up, that is when God is working. No. Don't get me wrong. Until we begin to fly or bank the floor, God may walk whether we shout 
or we don't shout. Your shout does not increase what God is going to do. No. You know, it's so interesting. The story of uh, the Arameans, the, the country that came to fight the people of Israel. So they fought them in the first, in the first kings, in first kings. So they fought them the first time. Israelites won the battle. The guys came together and said, you know what? You know why they won the battle? Because we're fighting them on the hill. That's why the Israelites won. Let's go and fight the Israelites in the valley because we will win. God got upset. God said, these people are saying, I'm a God of the mountain and I'm not a God of the valley. Because of what they said, I'm going to fight for you. There are instances in our lives where people will say, you, even myself, sometimes I question situations. You know, we, we try to rationalize, we, we try to look at issues and say, well, God can heal some certain kind of sickness, but he can't do some stuff. We feel like God can put, can give you a job, but God may not be able to give you your own business. Or we say, God is able to give you just any man or just any woman. You know, we feel like we are, we are getting to an age where we can't really marry the choice. And we say, okay, God can just give me a car. When someone says to you, God can give you a good car, you say, well, I don't mind, just give a car will do. Because we, in our mindset, we, we've got a God that can just do minute stuff. We don't know that the same God that can do small can do big. And this morning when I ask us, I'm, we're just going to worship it for like five minutes. And I really want us to worship God like never before. Because it is in worship, so much power lies in there. Hallelujah. I tell you, it is what prayer cannot do, worship does. Yeah. And you know why, sir? Yeah. You know when you pray, God will only send angels to answer your prayers. You will not see God coming to answer your prayers. No. God always sends angels to answer your prayers. But when you worship, God has to come and take the worship. Amen. That is the power of worship. So God is able to do it. God is able to do it. God is able to do it. Shall we please rise on our feet? God is able. Let's just begin to bless him. Let's forget. A song says, let's forget about ourselves. You don't know. Let's just begin to bless him. Let's just begin to bless him. Lift your voice and begin to bless him. If you cannot sing, just say him, Lord, you are worthy. You are awesome in your ways. You are awesome in your ways. Father, we want to give you praise. Blessed be the name of our God. Great and awesome, mighty God. Just lift your voice and begin to magnify him. Bless him, people. Lift your voice and bless him. Let your God hear your voice. Sing any song in any language to him. Just lift your voice and bless him. Bless him. Oshubareri. Sing any song whatsoever. Lift your voice and bless him, people. Lift your voice and bless him. 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 Oh, lift your voice and worship him. The great and mighty king of Israel. Who is like unto thee, Jesus, great and mighty, awesome in power, rulers of heaven and earth, we worship you. You are God by yourself, the God that does not require any recommendation, the one that sits on the throne. Who is like unto thee, great and mighty? We worship you, we lift you, I Jesus. Father, we lift you, I. You are God, Lord. We lift you, I Jesus. We bless your name, O oh God. We bless your name, Jesus. 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 Holy Spirit, we give you praise, Lord. We adore you. We bow down before you. We exalt you, Jesus. Come and bow down. Lift him up, people. Raise him up. Who is like you to you, Jesus? You are beautiful on the scripture you are highly exalted father we give you praise father we give you praise hallelujah you're the god of us some wonders 
I've tasted of your power. Raise your voice and say, Onishe, Onishe, Yanu. You have served me so much. Hallelujah. Say Onisha Iyanu, you are Onisha Iyanu. Oh, you're the God of you're the God of awesome wonder. Praise the Lord. You are the miracle world. 